Video and audio conference notice. Pursuit to Governor Audit's temporary suspension of open meetings law issued on March 16, 2020. This meeting may be conducted via Google, handout meetings, online, and video conference. Unless removed from consent agenda, items identified within this consent agenda will be acted on at one time. I am going to call the roll now, and as I call your name, you call your full name back. Flo? Flo? We have a problem. Flo, you're muted, Flo. There you go. Oh, Florinda Burnell. Keith? Keith Byron. Keith Byron. James? I don't see you, James. James Sullivan. Sylvester? Sylvester? Is Sylvester in the house? Sylvester is here, isn't he? Sylvester Vasquez Jr. Testing, testing one, two. All right, and I'm Mike Frazier. And have I missed anybody? Ida Sadalkin. Thank you, Ida. How would I miss you? And Yolanda Garza Lopez. And how would I miss you? Thank you. Everybody is present. And now we'll call the meeting to order, Keith. Next thing will be the invocation and pledges to the flag. Yeah, so we have Janice Hernandez, who is going to lead us in the invocation. And then we're going to, as we would do at our regular meeting, hold our Pledge of Allegiances, Mr. Fraser. So Janice, do you have the mic? Thank you, yes. Lord, we are meeting today to conduct matters of business. Guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that our affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being our source of guidance today. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state under God, one in the All right. Thank you all. The next thing is uh, we don't have any, nothing on uh, public uh, people to be seen. And the next thing is the board agenda is. Mr. Fraser, can I uh, interrupt before we get to the agenda? Sure. You got mm -hmm. some? Yes. We, I know on the uh, posting uh, we didn't have uh, any recognitions, uh, but we did want to take this time. Uh, you know, during this unprecedented time, we're, we're kind of all uh, uh, doing the best we can moving forward and really appreciate uh, all the uh, employees and the staff here at Southwest ISD and and of course we love our students and our, our communities and families, uh, but we do have some special notice of two, uh, one of our teachers, one of our principals that we just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge and recognize uh, for uh, some of their distinctions. And so I'd like to turn it over to Janice Hernandez and I think they're going to join us. Janice? Uh, that's right, sir. We, we have two very special guests with us tonight joining us at this meeting. Um, and I want to go over what the recognitions are for tonight. So uh, created in 2002, the HEB Excellence in Education Awards are designed to honor outstanding public school professionals and to thank them for their dedication and commitment. Through this program, HEB seeks to pay tribute to those educators who go the extra mile each and every day to serve their students and their communities and who inspire others to do the same. 
This year, we want to congratulate Resnick Middle School Principal Odelia Martinez, who has received recognition as a statewide semifinalist in the principal category. Congratulations, Odelia. She joins us tonight. We also have a finalist in the elementary teacher category. We want to congratulate Carl Dickerson, our Sky Harbor Elementary District Teacher of the Year, for being selected as a finalist. Winners will be announced on the Excellence in Education Awards website and Facebook page on May 6th at 6 p.m. We encourage everyone to stay tuned and watch to see if, if we get the win. Well, if we could, we'd give her a big hand now, but thank you all very much. So Thank I, I you. Do, we do have Odilia. Do you want to say something? Because if you do, then your picture will come up to the forefront. Uh, well, I, I, I put a little thing on the camera so it would be shown. But uh, I want to thank you for supporting me and uh, the board and uh, and and you, Dr. Verstev, of course, and everybody else. Thank you very much for all the support. I miss my kids a lot. And uh, I took out my... Uh, Retirement thing because of that I can't I can't stay here missing them so uh, I'm going back so uh, thank you very much for all of your support. Oh dear, it's an honor. Uh, we appreciate everything you do. You've been a great leader in Southwest ISD, and so congratulations to you and and look forward. Uh, I know you already got your HEB uh, uh, certification and HEB card, which is very important nowadays. Uh, yes. in the bell. And so uh, we're extremely happy and proud of you, Julia. Thank you very much. And I want to congratulate Carl, too, because he worked at Sky Harbor where I was a principal. So congratulations, Carl. Very good. So, Carl, you want to say anything? There you I are. just want to thank, hey, you all for, thank you all for all your support and for, for working so hard for us. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do everything we do without y'all. So, so thank you all for everything. Thank you. And congratulations thank to you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're sorry you don't get that nice dinner this year, guys. Uh, <laughs> but, but you're very, you're very loved and 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 extremely thought of. So great job. Thank you, to both of you, and thank you for logging on tonight. Thank you. Well, Dia, I've known you for years, and there's no doubt that something like this was in your future. You're a great, great person. Thank you. Likewise, Mr. Frazier. I appreciate your words. Thank you. So Janice, uh, and I'm sure there's some people in the chat room congratulating you guys. Yes. Uh, that was all right, Janice? That's it, sir. <laughs> okay, Mr. Fraser, I'll turn it back over to you. Congratulations to Carl and Odelia. Very proud. All right. Is there anybody that wants to speak to the board? I assume not, but better things have happened. No, sir. We put the notice out and we did uh, not receive a notice to uh, make public comments tonight. All right. The next thing is the consent agenda. Board members, we have questions on the consent agenda. I move that we accept the consent agenda. Can I have I a second? That. I second that. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those in favor have said I've made and seconded the motion. All those that, and the motion carried. I, I'm sorry, I'm gone crazy tonight, but the motion carried. Sylvester, your picture came up. It scared me. <laughs> All right, the motion carried. Going on, um, the next thing is item of the information and construction is the first one up. Yes, Brandon, I believe is here. I thought uh, Sylvester was going to be construction. He was up there ready to go. He was ready to go. You're sharing a screen while ago with us. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can, Brandon. Okay, I just want to make sure you can see the slideshow. Uh, this is just a, uh, a, a real preliminary uh, Rendition. I wanted to give you all a couple of updates. Uh, the, at the next Brown Brag, I'll plan on bringing in Marmon Mock and uh, have them do a whole presentation with Joris on uh, the natatorium. So tonight, really, we're just kind of looking at some renditions of the natatorium. Um, and as you can see, this is kind of like the first design 
uh, as we're getting closer. And you can see this is kind of like the frontage of of, of, the, of the campus where you'd walk in the natatorium and uh, there's a lot of glass there. Uh, some really neat items as far as architectural. Uh, up here, you can kind of see the, the natural flow areas uh, and really just uh, kind of getting a layout. And so this was kind of what you would do if you pulled up and you were walking into the natatorium. Up here, you have some, uh, these are some fire code stairs that we need to have in place, but it also could be an exit for people that are, because up here on the top floor would be where the spectators would be. Uh, and if we needed to evacuate them, uh, you can't really see, but there's some really nice panels right here in front of those stairs. Uh, later, when we get to the brown bag, there'll be some better pictures of those. But this is kind of like the first picture of it, what it would look like. Uh, there's not much graphics to it yet. Uh, we just put a little sign there, but this would have a lot more graphics. It'd be a lot more uh, things on the building that represent Southwest ISD and, and, and the natatorium. Uh, so the layout. Uh, this is kind of like the first layout. Uh, I did talk to, to subcommittee about some of the soil issues that we face there. We are facing some of the soil issues that we face at uh, Sky Harbor and Sun Valley. We have a lot of clay. Uh, and so we kind of looked at different areas of the site to try to move. Uh, and really up in here, we do have a lot of soil issues. And so we looked at testing in the back part. Uh, and the soil was a little better, but the cost of moving all the roads and utilities outweighed. Uh, and so we do have some soil issues I'm going to talk about here late at the end. But this kind of has two entrances, one that we could use if we needed overflow parking and if we needed McAuliffe. Uh, mm -hmm. And really the main would be on this side and you would come in and then you'd have the athletic offices here. And this part right here is where the main entrance is, the same main entrance you were looking at uh, and in the parking lot. And then this is where the buses would come in and they could park over here and be out of the way. And so as you're driving from Palo Alto on 410, this is the backside, but this backside is important because that's where the glass is and you can see into the pool. So from the highway coming from, from Palo Alto, you would be driving down the highway and you could see the pool and see through the windows and the glass to see into the pool and all the activities going on. If you're coming from Marbach Road and Pearsall Road, you're coming down 410, you're seeing the great entrance with all the glass and you're seeing into like the vestibule area. And so it's kind of the idea is to show it off. And when you're driving down the road, you look over and you can see into the glass areas of the building. Uh, when you get into the building, uh, this is the first floor. Uh, we're still going with two pools with our 50 meter pool and our our second pool here for the warm up and the instructional and all the other things that we want to do with it. But you would walk in that glass area and the reception up here uh, and immediately you would be able to go to two areas. One area would be the aquatics director's offices on the bottom floor. Uh, and then to the left there, you would go or to the right, you would go immediately up the stairs and well, if you're going down, stay downstairs, you're gonna go into the area where there's gonna be a lot of locker rooms for both the male and the female teams <laughs> and public swim. At the end of that area, you have that wet classroom that we can use for classroom space, but also opens up to have ag strength training. And so there's a wall right here that's gonna be removable that'll fold up into this little room here. And this could be opened up for uh, physical activity and for strength training and also if we need to close it for uh, the meets and having meeting rooms, that would be available too. Uh, this would be the spaces that we would use for public, if we have some public things going on there. Uh, but this is kind of the first floor. There's a lot of areas that have mechanical areas, storage, et cetera. Uh, the top part is where we would send the uh, spectators. So they would come up, there's an elevator, but there's also stairs. Uh, this is similar to if you went, when we, if you went on the tour to the Walker pool, uh, we see the two meet rooms on both sides uh, that will be glass and air conditioned. And then we'll have our spectator seating here, the 750. And so they would immediately go upstairs and walk in and be able to go and sit above off the platform away from the athletes uh, and have great views of, of the events. On top of when you walk in, uh, on top of where the aquatics director's office is, where we would put the athletic offices. And so this is where Coach Wagner's group. Uh, we wanted to centralize them and put them in a place where they would be separated from not necessarily Southwest High School, but kind of in the middle where they receive items in both Legacy and Southwest, have them accept, uh, accessible uh, in a, a, a more equitable place. And so this is kind of like just the first layout. Uh, I do want to talk about some some updates when we were doing the project back in early February at the February Brown Bag, we brought 
the items that we were we wanted to add to the project. We talked about two pool systems, the Mirtha system, the, the extended seating, uh, and that really put our budget over about five million. Since then, we did some testing. We had the geotechnical people go out and do some testing in the area, uh, all through the area, lots of testing to find out the, how the soil is there. And we got really bad news that the soil uh, it is not conducive to to buildings and and much less a pool a building with a pool in it. So we're having to put a deep foundation system. And this is with with the architects, the MEP, uh, with the general contractor, Joris on board. Uh, and so that price to basically do that, if you look here where it says deep foundation system, uh, we had revised the program to get to about $26 million. And that's with the 5 million that we talked about at the, the brown bag. But it's going to require an additional 1.2 for this deep foundation system. So that's going in there and digging out uh, lots of feet of soil and then going back in there with new soil, with better PI, uh, PI, and then putting piers and concrete piers in the ground to support this structure so that we won't have any issues with uh, the building moving later on. So I'm bringing that up because I want you to, uh, there's some, we have some really good news later in our construction projects. Uh, but I just want you to know that right now that we did have the five million that the board kind of approved. There was no action item, but to move forward and design. But there is some additional funded needy, needed for this project. Uh, but I think that uh, based on some of our other projects, we'll be able to circumvent a lot of this additional funding with bond funds instead of fund balance. So I'm going to wait till we get to those action items and we'll explain as we go through those. But this is kind of where we are at the, at the brown bag. I plan on having the architect and the contractor online with you going really more in depth and detailed on the natatorium project and then talk about some of the funding mechanisms and have a better picture for everyone. So uh, that's really all I have. If there's questions, I can answer them now. Uh, but for the budget piece, I would really like to wait. So when we get through all the action items, can you can kind of see the picture unfold. Uh, and that's all I have. Unless there's, And I'll take questions now if there is any. Anybody? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is that going to affect the warranty? Well, if to get it warrantied, the deep foundation system is going to be required. So if we do if we do this, we've already been told by Joris that the, the warranty would be in place. So the Martha warranty is still on as long as we do the deep foundation system. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Anybody else, board members? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything else on construction? No, sir. That, that's all for tonight. Till later. I know, I know, Mr. Fraser, we do have some items coming up at the brown bag and uh, on this particular project. Brandon has asked for extended time. Uh, that's why uh, tonight is just to give everyone uh, kind of an opportunity to see the project, the, the first rendition, beautiful building. Uh, and then at the brown bag, they really want to get into more of the details uh, of the actual project. I, I did want to say something on uh, currently with facilities. It's not really a construction project. Uh, obviously, everybody knows we're, we've, we've kind of shut down. Uh, a lot of our operations for the COVID virus and trying to protect individuals and uh, it's rain and the heat is out. So we have a lot of grass growing. Uh, so we're going to plan on bringing some ground, ground screw people back to try to, to, to catch up to that. Uh, but just kind of bear with us as we move forward. I know some of our places and areas are growing and it looks, it's not looking as good as it always does, but they're going to try to catch up. But at the same time, we're trying to balance uh, safety. And so I just wanted to share that with everyone. So as you drive around, you start to see, some areas haven't really been touched up as far as mowing and, and, and landscaping, but we're going to really try our best to catch up. But we're also dealing with heat and rain uh, and on a very limited basis. And so we'll do the best we can. I just wanted to share that from the team from facilities. Thank you. Anybody? All right. Thank you, Brandon. All right. You're still on uh, monthly tax report. Yes, sir. Uh, currently, we're about 92 percent collection rate last year we were at 93 percent at this time so we're right there we're a little bit behind less than one percent uh but up to this time the collection rate is actually doing well and we've collected a lot of our taxes so it's it's going well hopefully it continues 
All right, the financial report, investment report, gifts, enrollment report, review of purchases over 50,000. I don't think we even had any. Uh, and Dr. Verstuff, do you want to talk on the a and and the 1882 partnership? Dr. Verstuff? Uh, I was muted again. Uh, yes, I do. And, and I, I know that I sent a document to Joanne to share her screen. And so she can share her screen, uh, Dell. Um, so you guys know that we've been in a lot of conversation uh, with Tamusa and, and they are an exceptional uh, university partner. And uh, I, I want to thank Dalila and Zaline. And, and, and there's so many folks because there's, there's about 20 to 25, 30 people who have been involved over uh, multiple months in planning design and uh, working out the performance contract issues and uh, coming up with the PEA application. There's, there's a number of processes and a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, effort and dedication that goes behind something like this. And um, so we always, we always want to put the interests of our students first. Uh, we've been going down this uh, project. We've been reporting out to, to you all over multiple board meetings about where we are in the project. There's some really exciting opportunities to, to uh, really do uh, with Tamusa, uh, what we could really do with a million more dollars specifically for Southwest Legacy High School. Um, with, with the issues of where we are, because this planning all started pre-pandemic and uh, we are moving towards the future. And when the pandemic came and, and the accompanying um, uh, economical downward, severe downward turn that we're in and seeing what happened to oil yesterday. Uh, Dr. Shapiro uh, and I really had a, a really great conversation this morning about uh, our objectives is going to require funding and what we think is going to happen in funding and, and education funding uh, in the future uh, is still yet unknown. Uh, but we know we, we've been in financial crunches in 2007, 2011, uh, 2001, we know that during those times, uh, barrel was above a dollar a barrel, and we know that yesterday went below zero dollars a, a barrel. And so we know what, what's ahead of us, and we have to mitigate that. We do not think the funds are going to be there uh, to uh, achieve the objectives that we're, we're setting out. Uh, and so we decided today that we would put a period where we are uh, till we have more information about what the uh, revenue structure looks like in the state of Texas. Uh, during the interim, uh, we're going to uh, take some of the planning and we're going to try to do that uh, to the best of our ability outside of the 1882 uh, with our strong partnership with Texas A&M University in San Antonio. Uh, we're gonna continue uh, gauging uh, what opportunities lie ahead uh, during the interim. We also are going to, in tandem, reach out to our state leaders uh, to uh, hopefully support a system uh, that benefits innovation and not so much takeover uh, because innovation is what we were both after uh, and the process that the state wants us to use is complete takeover. Uh, and we had our challenges and our struggles and, and there's a lot of trust and believe me, our this is not a separation between Tamusa and Southwest, but it's more of a, a, a placeholder to see where we can go in the future. And, and so uh, this is a copy of the official letter we signed today, and I'm letting you guys see it uh, here for the first time, but we thought it was important to have a mutual statement uh, that supports one another, that explains our position, and uh, we will move forward, but we have no intention. Uh, Tamusa doesn't see it because they know they're gonna get into a financial crunch, uh, as the ability to achieve objectives, and neither do we at this point. And if there's any questions to that, I can uh, definitely try to answer them. Uh, and if not, I'd like Dalila and Zaleen get really took the lead on this. Uh, maybe share a few words. Dalila or Zaleen, do y'all want to add anything? No, just uh, to thank all the divisions that were part of this work as well. And we had a lot of people that were pitching in and giving us also their ideas. And again, thank you to Tamusa and also to the board for leading us and taking us this water. Yolanda was having a hard 
they'll underneath to see the the Londa needs to see the letter. She was having a hard time seeing it. I just sent it to you, Londa. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting now. Just, I don't know who's taking over. So uh, for any of the trustees, are there any other questions I could answer maybe? Lloyd, the total amount of money that uh, that we were needing to accomplish this was, did we have uh, an approximation of that amount? Uh, we anticipated it would be somewhere around a million, uh, a little bit over a million, based on where the uh, the levels were the last last year and based on the number of students at Southwest Legacy. An extra million, and that would have that would allow us to accomplish the plan that we were working on. Um, I think it would have put us on the right trajectory. Um, it did include a number of positions from uh, uh, Tamusha to come in, uh, have a, a clinical professor on site, have a professional development wraparound services to really get into the data, uh, really put a lot of concentration. Uh, teacher tuition support uh, was part of that to get more teachers mastered and, and uh, dual credit. Uh, uh, capacity. And so we're still going to try those things, um, depending on what happens to our budgets going into the future. Uh, but we're not going to give up on them. We just, we just don't think where we are right now, uh, economically in Texas and, and getting through what we're going through right now, this is the right time to take this forward. It would have been a nice million dollar infusion. Yeah, we take a million dollars. All right, uh, going on to uh, superintendent, and you want to go in to uh, set the sec well, superintendent on recommendation of, of uh, resignations or anything like that? We, we, can we, can, we can come back to that, Mr. Fraser, after close. Uh, we can go ahead and go through HR. Can we actually go into that? Uh, yes, we can. We can go into that, but we probably should go through the other divisions, and then we'll go into a closed session after the curriculum items. That's okay with you. You, you actually have one tonight, then. Sir? Executive session. You actually have an executive session. We do. We're going to log out of this meeting and log into a different one in a few in a little while. All right. We'll go on to item eight, uh, evaluation of waiver recognition for the Texas Education Agency. Yes. Uh, good evening, board members. This is uh, Mr. Baker, President Frazier, uh, other board members. Thank you. Um, we need to, uh, because of the school year uh, going into a remote work agreement, a lot of our administrators were not able to complete their uh, the required portion of evaluations of, of teachers. And that happened across the state. So the Texas Education Agency has opened up a waiver application where we can apply to uh, exempt ourselves from all the portions of the uh, uh, T-Test appraisal system. But we will need the board to act on that tonight. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, I I'd be happy to answer them. Questions, board members? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, are we still going to be able to, um, you know, for teachers that are uh, needing feedback and growth plans, and uh, are we going to be able to continue um, working on that aspect of the of the process? Yes, yes, we'll be able to do as uh, all the parts that we can uh, uh, possibly do. Uh, the, what we're thinking is maybe some of the teachers did not have a chance to have their formal observation. And what the state has given us guidance on is use all the walkthrough data you have, all the other kind of data you have to come up with a, a rating for the teacher and any kind of growth plan or, or thing that they need. Thanks. Anybody else? I move. I second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. All right, going to item nine, purchase of technology devices. Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, really two things. This was one of the bond. Uh, we, we actually went out, when we went out for bond, we had 3 million set aside for technology devices. 
uh, for our, basically for a replacement plan that we needed to have in place so that when we have these some of these devices that we have currently go out into their life, we can replace those. So part of this tonight is that. And the other part is uh, we have a lot of devices out right now uh, in the hands of students at homes, uh, you know, and not we're just kind of anticipating possible loss, possible damage. And so we want to make sure going into the school year next year, and we don't know how the school year is going to be. Played, anything can happen. We want to make sure we have enough devices to deal with uh, the devices that are going to go offline anyways and the devices that we possibly could have uh, in loss or or damage when they come back. And so we're making a big purchase and this is from the bond funds is about $1.4 million worth of, of Chromebooks. And we're going to purchase about 7,000 of those. Some of those will go towards the ones that we were going to replace and the other will go towards to make sure we have enough. Uh, if uh, obviously if this pandemic goes further into the school year next year, we want to be ready. But even when we come back, we want to make sure that we have devices in the hands of kids. Uh, and so this was really helpless. And so this is a bond initiative uh, and we're ready to move forward and we want to put our order in now so that we can get them by next year because everybody's ordering devices. Questions? I have a question, Mike. Go ahead. Brandon, um, are we going to pick up the devices at the end of the school year or are we going to let the students uh, keep them over the summer? So, so what we're doing currently right now uh, is we're in the planning phase of that uh, and we're, we're, we're getting into the, the talk. So we're going to meet with principals later this week. We've already started with a committee on, because we have a lot more items to pick up besides devices. We need to pick up instruments and there's some people that have athletic uniforms still. And so as we get closer to the end of the school, we're going to possibly, we want to get things back first of all, because we need to get them back to clean them and inventory them and know exactly uh, how many we have available, even if, because 7,000 might not be enough. So if you're not going to be in any summer programming, uh, any kind of summer school, if you're not a student, we want the device back at the end of the school year. But we need to go and continue instruction till the end of the school year, uh, because if we want to receive funding, we still have to provide instruction. So we're working on that timeline and working on all the logistics. I can't tell you exactly what we're doing right now, but we're planning. And we have a little bit of time, but we want to come up with a great plan so that kids in the summer have devices if they're part of summer pro uh, programming but also we get ready for next year if, well, if we do come back or if we need another plan. And so that's, that's kind of where we are. Uh, we don't have the answers yet, but we are working on that. So let me add to that too, Ms. Garza Lopez. Um, we, we meet a lot uh, with our counterparts, our Bear County ISDs and our business counter uh, partners and Bear County ISDs and with the state of Texas and, and we're all about at the same spot and, and this is the next big rock It's a really great question that you asked um, because we're we're all developing our best thinking moving forward we know that our students left for spring break and never really came back or really not really they haven't come back mm -hmm. we also know that we're in possession of some personal items that belong to our students and their families and we know that we have uh, textbooks and library books and and technology and and so no one's ever been in this uh, predicament before and and so uh, we're going to schedule uh, an opportunity this uh, and a plan to how do we collect uh, materials we expect that we're going to take a loss we're trying to mitigate and minimize that loss as much as possible with a, a really great plan uh, we know and we're keeping an eye uh, with Valerie Maldonado on what's happening in COVID in Bear County in San Antonio uh, and uh, we want to provide an opportunity through appointments for our, our students and their family to come retrieve their personal belongings as well. And so there's a lot of things still going on as we get into May. Uh, but somewhere around mid-May, uh, we know that we have to be pretty diligent about uh, uh, collecting an inventory and, and protecting the items uh, uh, with disinfecting or however we do that. So yeah, there's a lot of thinking going on throughout San Antonio right now. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Anything else? Need a motion. I move. Second. Motion's been made to second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to B, uh, GMP for a package two of Southwest High School, phase three. Yes, sir. Uh, 
So we we currently have Kincon and Fluger as the uh, the contractor and the architect on uh, phase three of Southwest High School renovation project. We talked about this in previous meetings. We brought to you items that we would like to do in the project. We did a walkthrough. Uh, so currently, we, we bid the whole project as is. Uh, we had no alternates. We had everything in the package. Uh, and the great news tonight is uh, King Con's and, and Fluger's ready to bring a GMP to the board tonight for approval for $13,215,000. Uh, Our original construction budget was actually $16,708,000. And so we have a, a really a great savings on this bid of about $3.5 million. Uh, and so this includes everything, and we're asking the board tonight uh, to approve the guaranteed maximum price for the Southwest High School Renovation Phase 3 project, not to exceed the amount of $13,215,000, and to allow district staff to negotiate terms and conditions on the GMP. Questions? Questions? I was writing that down, sorry. Yes, ma'am. Does this include, um, I, I know we had a couple of conversations, but I just want to clarify, does this include all of the projects that we had talked about originally the, when we went on the walkthrough? Everything that we added, uh, even the walkthrough, the art rooms, the all the ROTC areas. Uh, the choir, what about the choir? The choir, all, all that's in this, correct. Everything that we had, and we actually moved everything from an alternate to be in the base bid, and so all that, all these items include all that. With Very the savings, good. and so this is really good news. Thank you. And KenCon got it. KenCon, yes, they were. We had already awarded them. <laughs> they were the uh, uh, general contract that we awarded previously as a CM at risk. Any other questions? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Uh, KenCon, are they? How do they feel about being three million dollars low? Are they concerned about that? They were not concerned. They were actually asking us if we would like to do more and add other stuff to the project. But I know that we have other concerns and other projects that we could use those funds for. So they feel very firm. And so does uh, Fluger on the pricing. So uh, I don't know if it's the signs of the times, mm -hmm. or, but it's a uh, they. Yeah, they're they, they wouldn't give it to us unless they were ready to move forward. Well, uh, as a contractor, I remember I was always very concerned. Yes, sir. Far behind everybody else. I mean, so I left a lot of money on the table, and there's usually some reason. Correct. So I, you just might want to keep an eye on that. Yes, sir. We definitely will. Any other questions? Mike. Yes. Sir. Uh, yes, just sir. For, uh, anything we vote on, we probably want to do individual votes because this is – uh we don't see each other and the recording and and that way we know everyone's voting because last last vote kind of sounded like two votes so all right it's just for that future. sounds good we probably should be doing that all right let's vote on that one this way i need a motion i move i second and that was ida ida and Yolanda. Yolanda. And all those uh, voted, I, everybody that voted for it, give me a name, all of us, I guess. Keith. Keith Byron. Who else voted for it? Let's so go Mike, down the row. Mike, just call out names. That's easier. All right. I'll do it on the next one. Motion carried. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they, can, they, can listen, they can listen to this all they want. Me and James were a yes. James, James you here? Yes, sir. I heard anything all day. Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, all right. I'm consider here. approval of the CMR contractor for Francis Scoby. Yes, sir. Uh, we we put out a uh, CM at risk um, proposal to get a CMR at risk on board. Currently we have Garza Baumberger as our architect. So we are wanting to get a CMR at risk on board so that we can work through design. So this is basically getting price and their fees for overhead and, uh, and pre-construction. 
And so we accepted bids on April 9th. Uh, we had bids that ranged from $766,000 to $1.2 million. Uh, and so we, uh, district staff, along with Garza Baumberger, reviewed and ranked the firms. Uh, and in the, in the board booklet, you can see that we had quite a few uh, contractors and really good contractors. Uh, and the rankings came out that we want to award Bartlett Cop general contractors uh, the construction manager at risk at Francis Scobie Middle School renovation project for a contract amount of $766,700. Um, they would be the CM at risk uh, to help us design and get Scobie moving. And then later we would bring a GMP similar to what we just did with King Con. Uh, and so that is our recommendation. Questions? All right, I need want somebody to open the vote. Ida Sadalkin uh, makes the motion. All right, Ida made the motion. Uh, do I have a second? Sylvester James Sullivan, second. Sylvester, second. All right, all those that said aye. No, say our names. All right, who? Well, who voted yes? <laughs> Give me a yes. Ida, yes. Yolanda, yes. Yolanda, yes. Who else? James, yes. James, yes. Keith Sylvester, yes. Keith, yes. Sylvester, who else? yes. <laughs> Sylvester, yes. yes. You got anybody else out there? Flo? Flo, did you vote yes? Flo has left the meeting. I think she got bumped out. Right. All right, we got six votes on that one. Oh boy, this is fun. All right, the next thing, consider approval of Southwest ISD elementary gym, uh, elementary roofs for the gym. Yes, sir, on this project, we released a request uh, for competitive seal proposal as the method uh, for this project. Uh, with with LPA, the architect, district staff evaluated the CFPs. The proposing companies were to be evaluated on relevant experience, project management ability, subcontractors, and then pr uh, price and uh, financial stability. So we uh, had bids open on April 14th. We received four bids. Uh, they all ranged from 11.3 million to 12.2 million. Uh, and after viewing and checking references, uh, we are looking to award FA Nunley general contractors as the contractor for the elementary gym HVAC and roof replacement project. And we would like for uh, the board to accept a recommendation so that we can negotiate uh, pricing and terms and conditions with the contractor before, as we move forward. Questions? Motion? I so move. I second. And? Yolanda. Yolanda. All right. Who Jim. voted yes? Ida, yes. Ida, James, yes. yes. James, yes. James, yes. James, yes. He's Barry. Yes. He's yes. Flo, yes. Flo, yes. Sylvester, yes. Just going to ask from now on if everybody votes for it. Mr. Fraser, can I say one thing about this project? I wanted to let the board know that this construction project budget was originally 14.5 million. Uh, and this actual project, it came in at 11.3. So this is another project that we have about $3 million worth of savings. And so just wanted mm -hmm. to bring that up. I, I know y'all approved both, but we have about $6 million uh, of savings in these two projects of bond funds that possibly can be used for another project. And so that was what I was referencing earlier. And I just wanted to share with everyone. And we'll, we'll talk more about that at the Brown Bag to make some decisions. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that these two projects that we, out of the three, had some substantial savings that we could possibly use for other projects. Thank you. Do you think you could hire me as secretary? <laughs> yes, sir. You already have one. You just don't listen to me. <laughs> That's true. I probably should listen to you. 
All right, the next consider approval of the Southwest Middle School track, track project. Yes, sir. Uh, this is our last project for tonight. Uh, we also did a competitive sale proposal for procurement method, uh, and we released it out on and received bids on April 9th. We received four bids, uh, and the bids were ranged from 3.1 million to 5.2 million. Uh, and so we had district staff and CEC review the uh, the bids that came in. Uh, our original budget uh, for this project is 2.2 million. And so tonight we we're asking the board to reject all bids and give us the opportunity to reevaluate and possibly later go out again for bids. We would like to do some more digging on the project and see if there's anywhere we can find savings. But also, uh, we don't feel like the price uh, that we're getting uh, is sufficient. And so we would like for the board to reject all bids for this project and allow district staff and CEC to pursue other options to rebid this project at a later date. Questions? I move that we reject all bids. I second. And, uh, is there anybody that is against this not not doing this bid? I could do is anybody this against not doing the bid? If you'd like, I can do the roll call for you. Sir? I said, if you'd like, I can do the roll call so you can hear the votes. If I heard them. Okay, you got it? They're all against it. No, we're the we're next thing we're going into is curriculum and instruction. <laughs> and the first thing is consider approval of Southwest K through 12 temp temporary grading guidelines for remote learning. Yes, yeah, so I like to preface that. Uh, let me make sure I'm not muted. Preface that before I turn it over to uh, Dalila Garcia. So uh, this is an action item tonight as uh, approving some temporary grading guidelines. Uh, through the resolution that, that you guys provided uh, back in March, uh, we can do this, but we know this is a sensitive area. And so we know that uh, you guys are the first ones to get calls. Uh, we just want to be able to take this item uh, to the board uh, as a for guideline. This is not policy that you're going to be voting on. Uh, these are temporary guidelines uh, to provide some direction and, and make sure that our, our governing body is fully aware of what we're doing. In this arena, it's, it's a different time. Uh, we have never been here. I don't. No one in Texas has ever been here. Uh, we want to do what's right by our students, uh, but we also want to ensure that our students and our teachers are engaged in effective teaching and learning. Uh, we do know that there are uh, internet technology, uh, lack of infrastructure, and, and lack of internet uh, capabilities. We're aware of that. Uh, we know that we're social distancing we're aware of that we do not want to do anything to put our our students in any harm's way but we do have to have some expectations uh, wrapped around what we're doing uh because we know we're going to be in this for the long run and there is this uh outside possibility not that far outside but there is a possibility we could be in this environment through january 2021 and so our goal uh and i really wanted to commend uh c and i because they've you know, they spent 80 percent of their day on the 1882 and then the other 20 percent on on what changing into a complete different learning uh, platform. Uh, and so their world has been huge uh, as of late. And so we are still talking about how does this impact the future of uh, accumulation of credits and and how is it going to play into GPA for honor students next year? And so there are a lot of things that we still have going on that we're not ready to bring a full policy, uh, but we just want to do like the first big step tonight in, in uh, sharing the guidelines with the board and, and getting uh, basically your approval to let us move forward and, and keep ha uh, hashing this out and bring more information and a more comprehensive policy in, in the future. And so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Ms. Garcia and she'll yes. cover that item. Thank you, Dr. Rostov. Um, uh, on this item, we have been turning through it slowly and carefully just the way we've also been looking at the number of students that we have kept contact with. Um, I don't, I'm sure you saw on the media that that's been something that districts have been sharing. And so fortunately for us, we are reporting that uh, whether it's a student to teacher or student to principal, some sort of contact um, or even participation in the, in the classrooms, 
Uh, we are very um, happy to report that we are above the 85%. We do still have to come back and create some additional uh, definition, clarity around our students completing assignments, are students not, not completing the assignments, are they progressing through it? So along with this, we've also had to contact Frontline to make sure that our vocabulary, our words is something that the teachers can actually document on the report cards. So the fifth six weeks is closing. We did have to move on this really, really quick, just like everything else with the situation that we're in. But I do appreciate uh, Bailey and Zeline who have been able to meet with principals to get their input as well. So this was something that was driven also from the principal. So I appreciate uh, Belia who is going to share some additional information. Belia. Belia. Hi everyone, good evening. Thank you um, for having us uh, report this out. So as Dr. Burstiff and yes, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we hear you. Okay. So, um, in your board packet, you, thank you. So in your board packet, you do have some temporary grading guidelines for the remote learning that we have brought principals, um, some academic coaches together and some CNI folks to be able to provide um, input and feedback around this. Zelina and I have also been involved in weekly meetings with the surrounding school districts in Bear County. And so through a lot of that collaboration, we followed the lead um, and did some of the same things that they are doing. Um, for the element, I'm going to talk a little bit about the elementary. Dodie is on here also and Zeline to be able to ask answer any questions you may have in regards to um, grading and frontline and of course secondary. So the uh, what we're asking is for the temporary approval for um, the admin regs that we have in our student handbook. As Dr. Verstev mentioned, we are not changing uh, board policy or recommendation. Um, according to also this document that you have, and I'm not sure if, if you can see my screen. Let me share my screen. So in your board packet, you also have a um, document that TEA has provided around grading guidelines. And so we used that document to be able to structure the conversation and um, the guidelines that we were going to be changing. And so, can you see this document? No. No, it has a comma. Can everybody see that? No. No, we cannot. So this is the document that we used from TEA that provided us guidance on grading. And if you district to be able to adopt, I'm sorry. Oh, you, you cannot see it. Uh, I don't know why. So you have the, the document in your board packet and it's titled at the top. It's called Guidance on Grading. So this is the document that we did use uh, by TEA to be able to guide our discussions. Any changes or We also, uh, yeah, Richard. I don't know how to how to um, how to change that. It says that I'm presenting, but um, yes, it's in the board book. So the document is in there, and it's the guidance on grading. That's the document that we use. The proposal that we're taking today, and you can see it now. Okay, so this is the TEA guidance document. Um any revisions we were going to make. And then if you'll take a look, these are the guidelines that we included. So I went ahead and included the verbiage that we currently have in our local policy. Although please keep in mind that we're not changing policy, we're just looking to revise the student handbook and make the changes to those admin regs. So everybody is still collecting two grades per week in each of the content areas and in each of the specials. But this section for uh, as well, what we submitted to Mona, this is the recommended revisions that we're making. And this is the input that all school principals have. So for elementary, we said that in grades kindergarten through 12th grade, teachers will record and post two grades per week, except for specialized events or tests like state mandates, live test weeks or beam weeks and every subject area and specials. And so what we're looking to do is keep it the same. 
Everyone will be assigned to graded tasks in each of the core content areas. The assignments will be posted throughout the week. We're going to be very flexible with the due dates in accepting that work because we know that we have some students who are using um, the paper packet or the low tech plan. Um, but the main thing is, is that our grades will now be input as complete assignments, in progress assignments or incomplete assignments. And so the grades really should reflect the participation with attention to the mastery of the TEKS uh, because that was also guidance from TEA and that they would be based, based, based upon the work that is submitted. And again, like I said, that we would be flexible on those due dates. What we did want to say is that um, we're going to recommend an instructional recovery program for anybody who might have um, had some lost learning during that time. And we also want it to be very clear and letting everybody know and principals agree that students would not be penalized for the following, the method used by the student to respond or the inability to access resources to complete the assignment. So we've been, uh, we've stressed very, um, very carefully that we don't want this to impact students in a negative way. Does anybody have any questions so far? I have a question, Velia. Do we know what percentage of the of our students are doing the online learning? Yes, so we do have another document that I'm sure we can go ahead and share with you. And we have every campus that's documenting um, grade levels and also special pops um, from a weekly basis. And so what they're doing that is they're providing numbers and percentages on how many students are engaging for the week. Um, as Dalila said, we do still need to come back and provide a little bit of guidance as to how everybody is defining what participation is or what engagement is to make sure that we're all on the same page, only because we want to make sure that our percentages are correct. Um, as Dalila mentioned, the percentages are above the 85%. There's very few numbers that... Um, we have not been able to contact students or that have not submitted any work, but um, the principals are tracking that information. So for instance, they may have a student who is participating in all of the STEM classes and all of the STEM activities, but yet is not participating in any reading or math. So we do have a tracking system where um, principals are documenting that and they're making efforts on a weekly basis to reach out to families. And um, I know, um, Ms. Crisp has been mentioned as McNair and as a parent, I can say I get a weekly call every week and I get constant reminders. So all of the principals and campuses have been really good about constantly trying to reach out to those people. And I also know that um, HR has also assisted with helping us in um, contact people who we just have not been able to get a hold of or students we haven't been able to get a hold of. I guess my question is more, okay, I understand to me, 80, we have contact with 85% is different from we have 85% participation. I'm trying to determine, okay, 85% that we just have talked to, but that doesn't mean the children are engaged. Or is it 85% that we know that the children are engaged in some way, shape, or form? Right. Yes, and they're, that is they're, the they're, they're, engaged, they're engaged in some shape or form. So what we did is we defined, um, again, with the principles, um, um, the definition of synchronous and asynchronous learning. So for instance, if you have a child who is working on a packet at home because either the hotspot still, still don't work, where I'm at, they don't work, um, the internet constantly drops. So if the student is participating in a packet, um, the packets are three weeks worth of work at one time. And so they may not have the packet submitted yet, but yet the campus is still reaching out. The teachers are still making phone calls and on a weekly basis and saying, how is the student doing? Does he have any questions around the work so far? Um, I know the packet's not due yet, but you still have time to submit that in. So when we talked about participation and engagement, we really wanted to, to be able to reflect both, right? Those students who were not necess necessarily logging on at the same time that the teacher's logging on, because that's some of the feedback we got from parents. With having multiple kids in the household, a lot of them are not able to log on at the same time or parents 
who are still working may not be able to get their kids at the same time that the teachers are. So they may come on and get on. And I'm going to use my child as an example. You know, he doesn't get on any of the assignments all day. So he hasn't checked in with the teacher. But by the time his assignments are due, you know, he'll go in there and, and submit them. So he technically is still participating in learning. A lot of it, he's just doing it on his own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so with these, Does that help? And with these grading yes. guidelines and the grades that are being posted, we're going to be able to look at also in the district, how many of the grades have been posted. And for the most part, that's how we, all, we normally even track the students um, throughout the year. So when the teachers are posting, that means the teachers are engaged, the students are engaged. So this is going to be more data for us to even look at and consider. As we're moving One more this. question. Have we made a decision about what we're going to do about the children that the 15% that we have no contact with? Uh, HR has done an excellent job with the visiting teachers. We have, um, Dr. Bay has helped us with that. And so we are going to continue to, along with the visiting teachers, they're helping us to still contact the students, contact our family for some, some way, somehow get a hold of them. Did you want me to show that data, Lloyd? Because I can pull it up really quickly if you want. Yeah, I think uh, we, if you can pull it up real quick. I think it's, yeah. it's healthy. We're, you're asking really great questions, same questions we're asking ourselves and, and looking at data. And so it's, it, it transitions across other divisions to look at this data. Uh, what we're trying to do right now is calibrate engagement and, and really trying to have a threshold of what engagement is and what the, the expectation is. Now that we've transitioned to a new platform, it's about how do we hone in and make this platform the best it can possibly be. And so we're looking at that data as well. And we know uh, there's local media looking at this data. And, and so uh, we're collecting it. Uh, and now we're going, taking the, the, the process of going back and meeting with our leadership at all the campuses uh, to try to uh, create the Southwest ISD definition of student engagement and what we expect. So we're looking at apples to apples. I guess my question, I had a parent ask me, so what if a child doesn't engage in the, are they going to fail basically is the question that I was asked well, and I didn't have an answer for that. that. That's a great question. I can tell you right now, and I think uh, Joanne will go through this data. Um, there are some students who left us uh, the Friday or early out before spring break and we have not been able to contact now. Uh, some of those students may have gone out of country. Uh, they may uh, be visiting and, and just haven't returned. Uh, but those are the 15% the that Delila referenced earlier. Those are the students that uh, we're, we're, we're looking for, uh, we're trying to make some form of contact with. Uh, once we make contact with them, we definitely will uh, create a, a pathway for those students to get engaged and do some work uh, along the Texas Central Knowledge and Skills so we can uh, count that as a grade. If we don't find those students, there's no way that we could give them some form of positive outcome. So we may take an average of where they were before they left for spring break. And those are the conversations we're talking about right now. So where they left may be, uh, and, and there's a lot of information on the TEA COVID-19 website. There's a lot of district models that uh, we keep pulling down and looking at, plus our own model to figure out which one is going to basically align in the best interest of our students, not having a, a negative repercussion because of this pandemic. And we already do have a plan. Uh, this year, we're gonna call it instructional recovery. So because there was no assessment, we did not have to do an SSI or even retesting. And so we are already planning on a, an instructional recovery, which is something that's gonna run through the summer. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, summer school. Almost, yes, like summer school. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can you see this data? I don't know if everybody can see this participation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so uh, the the participation actually looks really, really healthy comparatively when we're looking across districts and hearing, um, seeing you know evidence to support that on what other people are seeing. I know Lloyd gets a lot of information in his superintendent conversations. Um, it, it actually looks really healthy. And in places where it doesn't look healthy, it's not necessarily that kids aren't participating. It could be things like, 
They're, they just haven't logged on that week or, or whatever, right? So there's lots of reasons why. Uh, what we're doing, um, there's a team of principals that have connected um, with um, with me about two weeks ago. I was given the task as a division leader to kind of create some guardrails as a district systemically on what we want to see happening with respect to student behavior and with respect to teacher behavior. And what I mean by that is not what are kids doing in curriculum instruction or what are teachers teaching and how are they teaching, but what what kind of calendar do we want to set so that we can function in this remote environment without putting so much stress on our families and our, our, our teachers? Mm -hmm. uh, it was a completely new environment. We stood it up overnight and we're all getting used to it. I can share with you, I have a, a division um, a professional that, um, she has to work and so there's only one computer and so she has to share that with a college student that's home and now is doing online learning so ultimately i think the data is really healthy there are some discrepancies i would i would prefer not to share that because i think it's anomalies to specific campuses and we haven't had an opportunity to really work through that i can share with you that on the non-contact kids meaning that we haven't had contact with them our visiting teachers and our uh, JCMs, which are part of the grant that we received, they're actually getting some training uh, to protect themselves to seek out by home visits on um, what is actually happening with those. And so uh, we can bring this back in another agenda item in, in brown bags so that y'all can see the uh, more detail. Uh, but ultimately this participation data could mean uh, for one campus, it could mean they're logging on every day and that's their expectation right now. For another campus, it could mean that they logged on one time during the week. So the, I, the data right now is, is not consistent and it's not comparing apples to apples. And so we should have that finalized by next uh, Monday afternoon for a presentation to senior staff. And then the following week, we can have a, a better data picture for our board. A note okay. just came in that they're trying to do this at Elm Creek, but the uh, the presentation, the hotspot, and so forth is so low there that they can't do the, mm -hmm. anything. Yes. Yeah. So we've been playing with a word of contact, engagement, participation. So that's that's where we're we're gauging this at right now. We are just celebrating the fact that we have some sort of contact with the students versus what has been reported in the surrounding districts. And uh, we're definitely celebrating um, that we're moving forward and uh, with the assistance from a, uh, AHR that the visiting teachers also doing their part, which we appreciate the work a lot. Thank you. Great. I, I so, think y'all are doing a great job. Thank you. I think one of the things that Delila reminded us about this this morning and senior staff that you know, we did not come back after spring break. It wasn't, we didn't go a week or two without getting devices. They were devices, mm -hmm. low tech uh, packets were handed out that very next week. And I think that continuation immediately after spring break has a lot to do with engaging our, our, our kids and our families. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been a, a help in a very challenging time. I also uh, want to say that uh, I know that uh, nationwide participation rates are, uh, very low. There, some districts are losing as many as 30% of their kids. So I, I definitely agree that a 15% is is uh, is a much better job than a lot of other districts. Well, thank you for the effort. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. So just, Be thank you. So just to close out, we'd like to ask if we can approve um, the temporary grading guidelines in the student handbook. I know that we do that. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. aye everybody aye. everybody aye. voted for it 100%. Aye. Thank you. Sure. All right. Board members, I need to go over something because I messed up early in this. And from now on, and it's my fault. I should have come up with this earlier. And whatever we have to put on tape is fine. If they want to run me out of the county, that's fine too. If we get a motion, if it's not turned off, is it? 
as we have each motion, I'm going to come up and have your names here, just like I do for these last two motions. And I will check off and call your name every time in the motion and check it. I'll have a sheet to check it on each time. So it won't look so crazy over here. And, you know, maybe it'll give me a hot dog or something for doing it right. But from now on, we will go the person that made the motion and the second, and I'll have a little chart where we'll check it off. And I should have had something ready for that, and I never even thought about it. But from now on, that's the way we'll do it. And we will have less conflict. You're doing a great job, Mike. We're all learning. For a two-year-old. No. You're carrying that monkey really well, sir. I know you put two on me today. <laughs> two monkeys. All right. What have we got left here? Item 10B. Item 10B, master schedule of new courses for secondary campuses. Yes, for this, uh, this has been work that has been going on even since before COVID uh, in January. And I'm going to just go ahead and have Zeline and Chrissy share out the additional details. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I apologize. I was kicked out of the meeting, so I'm on my phone and uh, Chrissy will be projecting the uh, presentation. But this is the um, same one that we discussed at the April 7th brown bag. Chrissy, just let me know when you're on since I can't see the, um, the screen. Yes, ma'am, I'm on. Okay, perfect. So we wanted to ask for, uh, look at the new seven innovative CTE courses um, based on the programs of study that we are uh, recommending to offer. We're also looking at a biology on ramps. Uh, we do have prerequisites for those uh, for that course, which is biology and chemistry, and then English three on ramps. And these uh, on ramps courses will provide some dual credit opportunities for Southwest Legacy High School. So right now they do not currently have an instructor. So we are asking for approval for these two uh, on ramps courses to increase the dual credit opportunities. Um, in addition, we also broke down the CTE courses in terms of the areas of uh, programs of study. So you do have the STEM courses um, that uh, are with aerospace and aviation. Um, and then we also have uh, the public service courses for the other, for the other uh, areas, which include the COSMO and the microbiology and safety, and then the legal and research writing. So these are the same courses we discussed at the April 7th uh, brown bag, but we just broke them up into the programs of study. Um, and then finally, we wanted to look at the um, pathways, the proposed pathways for 2021. Um, so for Southwest High School, we are looking at uh, business management, graphic design, teaching and training, and legal studies, and then proposing for Southwest Legacy, cybersecurity and law enforcement, and no changes for programs of study for CAS STEM High School. Do we have uh, any questions from the board? Those are, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. If nobody has any questions, I need a motion. Sylvester so moves. Ida Sadalkin seconds. Who, who made it? Sylvester, you made the motion? Yes, sir. And Ida made the second? Yes. Flo, how did you vote? Yes. James, how did you vote? Yes. I vote yes. Yolanda, how did you vote? Yolanda, how did you vote? Okay, here I am. Sorry, I got kicked off. I'm back. Um, okay. I yes. will say. And Keith, how did you vote? Keith Barham, yes. Gosh, look at that. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Mr. Superintendent, what else do you have for us tonight? Mr. Superintendent, are you in here somewhere? I always forget to unmute. I'm sorry. I said yes. Before, uh, I want to thank you guys for your patience of you know, doing these virtual board meetings uh, are new for all of us. Um, and so I think you're doing a, a great job, everybody, and just want to commend you for, for uh, your civil your civil service to all of us and making sure that we can keep everything moving uh, for our youth. We will come back beyond this, no doubt. Uh, and I think uh, what's important right now is, is protecting our kids and and uh, making sure that uh, they continue learning uh, in the best environment we can put forward for them. Uh, tomorrow, uh, if we were in our our uh, position face to face, we would be celebrating uh, Administrative Assistant Day. And so, I just want to thank Mona and all of our administrative assistants uh, in our school district uh, virtually, and uh, they do a great job, whether they're here physically or or at home, uh, continuing to work. Uh, so, thank them uh, for everything they do, and. We'll go to closed session, uh, Mr. President, and then we'll come back in this open meeting to take action on, on those items. We're doing any other uh, meeting that we have scheduled. Do you want to tell me how we go into closed session, sir? Did I just wave a wand in the air? I believe there's, a, there's another calendar invite that's at 7 o'clock called Board Closed Session. So you'll oh. log out of this one completely, and then you'll log on to that one. For closed session. What, yes. what, Everyone else will speak back if you what if, what if I log on on a different device in the closed session? Can I leave this one open? Sure. Why not? Yes. Well, you want to make sure that you're not being heard in the other session for your closed session. So just make sure that you yeah. can't. Heard Sylvester. And Keith, do you need to hear the gavel? Aren't you recording something? All right. First meeting is over. We go back to item seven. Is everybody back? Well, I don't know everybody. So. I don't see Keith yet. I so. just got back. I had to All right, away. we go back to item seven, superintendent's recommendation on personnel. I move. I, I second. second. Motion's been made and seconded. Flo, how did you I vote? Uh, I, I Yes, <laughs> I seconded it, yes. Well, I guess then you seconded it, and Sylvester yes. James, how did you vote? Yes. Oh, yes. Ida. Yes. Yolanda. Yes. We got anybody else out there? Keith is not here anymore, so. He already took it. All right. It carries. All right, let's go home.